Hey, good day to you. This is Stan Prochowski with Prochowski Estate Law, and this is the Ask Stan Show every Thursday at 12 noon, where I answer all your estate planning questions submitted throughout the week. If you have a question about wills, trusts, Medicaid pre-planning, Medicaid crisis planning, the nursing home, or just estate planning in general, just send them to me here on Facebook or call me at 363-7222 or email me at Law at gmail.com. I'll answer them live on WKSR Radio, and we post them here on the Ask Stan Show every Thursday. So, let's get right to it. California Dreaming from 66, the Stan Perchowski only of the morning. Yeah, that's a, that's a good one. That's a, that's a good You know, uh, Mama Cash, remember, she, uh, uh, you know, maybe... What, 1974, I think you said. July 31st, 1974 was the day she died. She did. I think she choked to death yep. on you know, chicken bone or something like that. It was, it was big news. Well, we were just talking. That, shortly, you know, she had making, when well, she was trying to make a break from the mamas and the papas, and she had come out with a song, Make Your Own Kind of Music. She did. And I think that was kind of her, uh, trying to be her signature song. Yep, July 31st, 74. That's when Mama Cass passed away. And there's been some more members of that group yep. that have passed on too. She had an excellent voice. She yes, did. yes, she did. Well, you've been a busy man. You've had all these seminars going on. And I have. I've got one coming up. Uh, you know, folks had, in the office and everything. Yeah. Well, we had one. I'll just touch on that real quick. Um, we have one coming up. It's October the 27th, which is a Tuesday. It's up in uh, Columbia at that memorial building. And uh, it's on the 27th. We're doing two as usual, one at 1 o'clock, one again at 6 p.m. It's not just for, you know, people in Columbia. It's, you know, that's just the thing you invited us up there. So uh, we're having it up there. You know, if you want to drive up there and come to that, just call the office, you know, 363-7222, and we'll get you on the RSVP list. Uh, we'll social distance. A little smaller of a venue than we're used to, but we can fit folks in. So, uh, you know, it's called a Wills, Trust, and the Nursing Home, and that's just what we're going to talk about. Hey, what do I want to talk about now in the time we have? And, uh, I had somebody come up, two people come up to me in the last couple of weeks and said, hey, when you're on the radio, can we call in and ask a question? And I, I thought, well, I'm only here for 15 minutes, but if you, if you want to, you're welcome to do so. I don't know, um, you know if you can fit it in or not, but uh, that, that's fine too. Or just call me at the office and I'll, I'll be glad to answer them. But uh, what I want to talk about now is uh, some stuff that's come into the office. It, it, I want to call it, it seems like it's been like do-it-yourself month or something here. And I don't know what's driving it, but, you know, I've got a lot of folks that have come to my office uh, asking questions or wanting me to do something, and they've got, you know, some estate plan stuff or documents that they kind of, what I call, do it yourself. Uh, the first one I want to talk about are, these, are some handwritten wills we've seen come in. And people come in uh, with wills that they wrote now uh, on hand, and they said, well, you know, I've got this will that Daddy wrote, or, you know, I'm just going to put everything on a, on a notepad. Now you can have a handwritten will, but it's very specific on what makes it valid because, you know, wills are, documents have been around for years. They have, they have enjoyed a, a long abuse, you know, many years of abuse, so they're formally executed. And they have to be done right. You can do them handwritten, but you still have certain formalities that you got to make sure are in place or they'll be invalidated. Uh, one of the things I've seen is a lot of people will use the word heirs, you know, H-E-I-R-S. And that's a very specific legal term, and that may not be the one you want, depending on how you want to leave property. So uh, uh, you may want to name individuals and say, just use heirs, because heirs is a legal term that encompasses a specific class of people. Another one is people bring them in and say, I wrote out my will and I had it notarized, so it's all legal. But a will doesn't need to be notarized, and notarizing doesn't make it legal, because notarizing just is you know, proving to uh, an officer of the court that you're the one making the signature, but the notary has nothing to do with the content of the will. Uh, in, in reality, a will has to be only witness. Now, we do notarize certain documents with a will, like a, uh, where the, wit the witness has signed a notarized document, but that, that has nothing to do with the content of the will. I even had somebody tell, tell me, uh, I, we know what Daddy wants, he did his will, and we, we have a recording of it on his phone where we, we video it. And that's not going to fly either, because we, like I said, a will is a formally executed document. And it requires, uh, it requires to be two witnesses. Both witnesses has to be in the sight and the presence of the testator when they sign it. They have to, you know, sign a, a statement saying the person appeared to be to them of sound mind and they purported it to be their last will and testament. All those things can be attacked and, and destroy the validity of a will if there's any kind of challenge. 
And so these, you know, although you can do a handwritten will, it just leaves it wide open for somebody to attack it. So uh, don't, not a good idea. You know, I'm not trying to say you can, you know, you can't do it, but if you, if you want to do it, you have your heart set on it, give me a call and I'll tell you exactly what needs to be in it so that it'll be valid. Another thing are changes to wills. Uh, I have seen wills brought in where people scratch through something and write something in the margin you know, of, a, of, a, of, of a formula executed will. Uh, you, that's not the way you change a will. The only possible way you change a will is with a, like an amendment that's called a codicil, or more likely we just do a whole new will. And the reason we do that is because I said, you know, I've said already once that a will is a formally executed document, and so it enjoys any codicil enjoys what we call the equal dignities rule, which means any amendment or codicil to a formally executed document has to have the same dignity of execution as the parent document. So if you're going to make a change or an amendment, that also has to be uh, uh, formally executed and witnessed. So you can't just change. You can't just scratch something out and write it into the, into the margin. That will invalidate it in a heartbeat. Also, folks come in and say <coughs> verbally, hey, daddy sat down and he told us what he wanted. And so, you know, you know how, do, how, do we, how do we accomplish that? He told us where he wanted the land to go and he told us who gets what. How do we do that? Yeah. I haven't got a good, I haven't got a good legal answer for that. I guess the basic legal answer is we can't, okay? Uh, if, you, if you don't memorialize it into a formally executed document, it's not getting done. Uh, there are some times when what daddy's intent was, it can help fill in the gaps if we have a will. But it's not, it can't, it never substitute for a will. <clears throat> Another one is, you know, he, sometimes there's just something that's handwritten that says, um, you know, we, we, just, we just did what daddy wanted, so um, we didn't do anything. We didn't probate or anything. He, you know, we knew he wanted the property to go here and there, so that's what we did. Well, the problem with that is, it may work at the time, especially if nobody challenges, but particularly with land, what we see happen often is 20 years later, you know, Daddy will pass away and says, I'm going to leave the land to, to you, son. And he says, it's okay. So he does. Son lives there, farms it, you know, works the land, uses it. 20 years later, the son or maybe one of his heirs decide they want to sell the property. When they go to sell it, lo and behold, we find the deed is still held by the deceased 20 years prior. It's a defect in the chain of title. It's got to be cured. So we've got to open up a probate 20 years later. Now, if you, do you, can you imagine if it's expensive to open a probate 20 years after a death? Okay, so it, it is. It's, it's time consuming and it's difficult. So that doesn't work here. So that's not a very good do-it-yourself uh, tool. Another one I see is some do-it-yourself trust. You know, we do a lot of trust at Prochowski Estate Law because, you know, wills are a, a step in the right direction, but in my opinion, they just don't do enough. A trust is a comprehensive plan that will accomplish anything that you want. Uh, it's a great tool. We use them a lot. I think they're they're a wonderful estate planning tools. There are several different time, kinds of trusts, but they, they will accomplish anything and everything you want done, we can get accomplished with the trust. Now, when we do these, I've seen just a couple of these uh, do-it-yourself trusts. I've even seen some trusts that I were sort of do-it-yourself from other attorneys. And it's a complicated area of the law. I mean, like, like anything else, you don't need an attorney to do something legal, but, by, but like anything else, it has to be done legally correct for it to be valid. So if you don't know how to make it legally correct, it's going to cause a problem. I want to go over a quick example of a, a trust that was brought to me by somebody. And it was brought to me, it was like a three-page trust, and it, they, they, they told me that they intended this to be an irrevocable trust. Now, you can have a revocable trust or irrevocable trust. And, Irrevocable is just sort of a different trust. It limits how much changes that can be made. But I talked to the trustee, and they said, yeah, you know, we thought we intended this to be irrevocable. I talked to the trustor, the person that made the trust, and said, yeah, that's, that's what we had in mind. He even called the attorney that drafted the three-page document up, and he said, yeah, that was the intent, this be irrevocable. But lo and behold, nowhere in the document it didn't say that it was revocable or irrevocable. So what's the solution to that? Well, if it had been one of my trusts, somewhere in the very beginning, there would have been the language, this is an irrevocable trust. And the reason that is is because whenever you don't say something in a trust, we have to go to our uniform trust code and fill in the gaps. So if it doesn't say it's revocable or it doesn't say it's irrevocable and it's silent on that, what do we do? We go to the trust code. And, you know, I knew this before I looked it up. The trust code says if it doesn't expressly say that it's irrevocable, then it is revocable. So, Everybody wanted this to be an irrevocable trust. It was not because it was fault. It was a do-it-yourself. It was revocable. One of the parties was disgruntled with it. We were very. It was easy for us to just revoke it and just take it away with a stroke of a pen, which is 
what they wanted. The other two parties were not so happy. Uh, uh, it's really, it would have been malpractice on the area of the attorney, in my opinion. But, um, and I've also seen some do-it-yourself Medicaid trucks. You know, we talk a lot about protecting assets you know, from the nursing home. I've seen people try to draft their own trust to, to protect that. That is a very complicated, very complicated field. Don't try that on your own. It, no good will ever come from that because the, you know, when you deal with Medicaid, it is, it is volumes of rules, regulations, and statutes, and you must be fluent with them to, to accomplish that correctly. It can be done correctly, but you've got to know what you're doing. So don't, don't wade into that sandbox without, without a, an experienced uh, elder law or state planning. And that's what we do at Prochowski Estate. Well, I mean, that's all that we do. And we excel at some of these trusts that uh, protect assets or make sure your property is distributed the way you want it to your children. We, we, we leave no stone uncovered. We make sure that everything you want done gets done and uh, the, best, and the best vehicle, trust, or will that, that is possible to do it, you know, to get that done, is what we do. And that's all we do. <clears throat> so, um, you know, if you're going to do any kind of estate planning, please don't, don't do the do-it-yourself uh, route unless, you know, uh, unless you really know what you're doing. That's my advice. Uh, come, if, you don't, if you don't come see me, go see somebody that's experienced in estate law or um, elder law because that's what's going to take because the most important thing is if you have some kind of document or hey, plan man. the most important thing is that it works call, call and you the, need it to call work. The 363 so, that's what we do give me a call i'm on the southeast there. corner of the pulaski square okay, thank you uh, 363 give me a holler sorry about that that's on me so <laughs> i say i started hearing myself yeah uh you know, just call us up we'll, you know, be glad to talk about anything you want. Uh, if you're interested in my seminar on the 27th, it's up at Columbia, the Memorial Building, um, at uh, October 27th, 1 o'clock and 6 o'clock, Wills, Trusts, and the Nursing Home. All right, very good. Thank you, Stan Prochowski. Always good to have you here on uh, every uh, Thursday morning, 8.30. Have a good week, and uh, hello to Miss Tammy. I will. Always a pleasure to be here. All right, we'll see you next week. Okay, thank you, sir. All right.